Let's, uh, let's have a prayer before we listen to God. Oh, Lord, our God, we come to you today seeking guidance, wanting direction, looking for inspiration, hoping for hope. I pray, God, that through this time and through your scripture passages, that we would find those things. But I also pray, God, that in the measure you want to go above and beyond that, that you'd also speak to us so that we wouldn't just get what we want, but that we'd get even more. And sometimes what's more is uncomfortable, and sometimes what is more is deeply reassuring. And whatever word you want to speak to into our lives today, I pray humbly, God, that you would use my voice to do that. Amen. So, as I mentioned, I, I think it's important for us to pause every now and then in life and reflect on, on major events. And this, this tornado that happened in Moore, Oklahoma at the beginning of this week, I think is one of those moments where we just need to pause and think about what's going on. Um, you know, things like tornadoes raise questions. And one of the questions it raises for me is, why would God create an earth that has such a destructive force in nature? I've never found an answer to that. People have offered me different things, and I've never, I've never quite found something that connected, that made me go, okay, now I understand. So I have to have faith that one day I will be able to have a, a conversation with God and, and be able to get his perspective on things, because I, I can't see it all. I know that God has uh, a, an idea, a, an intention in what he has created that I can't fathom in my own small world in this little slither of time on earth. So that part I trust to God. But there's some things that I really don't get. When we as human beings can affect change, in incidents like this. There are a lot of things we don't have control of in nature. We can't redirect tornadoes. We can't pick and choose when they arrive, nor how big or small they are. We don't have control over that. But we do have control over how we interact with one another. So at the risk of, uh, of me being audited because in my taxes because of what I'm about to say, I'm going to criticize one uh, department of our government, and I'm not going to do it in a partisan way. It's an observation. That department is FEMA. Very interesting things happened in Oklahoma with this tornado with FEMA. And this is the part that I don't get where we as human beings should be helping each other. Oklahoma has long been trying to build a safe place for people in their homes and in their schools when tornadoes come into town. Not every family and not every school can afford that. So they have been applying for assistance to try and get that job done. Here is a quote from uh, what the city of Oklahoma put on their website in February of 2003. This was a city putting this quote on their website in light of or in reference to Oklahoma needing assistance to build these safe places. They said, we found that the FEMA requirements and their interpretations seem to be a constantly moving target. I don't get that. Isn't, isn't one of the calls in our lives to help each other as human beings? I know uh, there's some administrative stuff that any organization stumbles over and, and gets too wrapped up in. But I don't get when it comes to helping each other in life and death situations that folk would get so buried in paper and regulations and as these guys said, a constantly moving target that you can never ever achieve what you want to achieve. I don't get that. In fact, that's more frustrating to me than trying to figure out why, why uh, tornadoes are such a destructive part of nature. 
there are things that we have control over as human beings. And sometimes we fail miserably in doing those things. In this particular instance, that really jumped out. But I will say this. There were times in that story, in interviews that I saw and things I read, that were just profound in terms of how one human being connected with another human being. Today, or this weekend, is Memorial Day weekend. We honor and celebrate those who have given their lives for a freedom that we don't always appreciate and that we don't always understand. But I also think today we need to honor the, honor the fact that there were teachers in that school in Oklahoma who said, I will risk my life to save these kids. That was just amazing to me. That these teachers would be committed to literally putting their own selves over these children to protect them. You may say, well, that's instinctive. I don't think so. Maybe for parents it is. But for teachers, that in that moment, it was reinforced for me that teaching is a, vaca a vocation. It's a calling that people feel to do that, to do that, that uh, uh, ministry, for want of a better word, in our community. And they would say, every one of them to a T in the interviews, I'm not a hero. I did what I needed to do. A teacher who decided, I need to do something to protect these kids, even if it costs me my own life. That's what God would want us to do. That's how God, I believe, expects us to behave as one human to another. That we would value another human being so deeply that we would be willing to go that far. If that's the definition of a hero, then that's what I believe. That's how I believe God sees us, is that we would be heroes to each other. So I don't get the tornado thing. Even more frustrating to me, I don't get the thing where, where an organization who should be helping other human beings in times of crisis doesn't do that. But I am just amazed. I am inspired. I am touched deeply when I read stories about teachers who reach out to children to say, these lives are lives that I am willing to put my own life on the line for. You know, I, I think sometimes when we sit and we watch an incident like that, we, we may say, well, I'd do the same thing. Perhaps so. I, I, I question whether or not I should show this video during our time in worship. And I decided against it. You can go on YouTube if you want to see it. But it's a story that takes place in, in Logan, Utah, in, in September of 2011. And what happened was a car and a motorbike collided. The motorbike uh, rider went under the car. And the motorbike caught fire. But because it was right next to the car, the car started catching fire. There was a woman who realized the rider, the bike rider, was under the car. The people who were like in the, I don't know what story it was of the building that were filming this, they didn't realize what had happened. They thought there were some people trapped in the car. And this woman runs around, she runs to the other side, and she looks under the car, and she tells people later she was wanting to see if this guy was, was breathing. And she gets the crowd together, organizes them to lift this car up, there were about a dozen of them, and there was a police officer who had arrived on the scene at that time, and they lifted this car up. It was a big BMW 5 Series. That's a heavy car. They lift it up, and somebody pulls this guy out from underneath this wreckage, thus saving his life. Those teachers, those people who gathered around that car, those are John 15, 13 moments. Robert, can you put up uh, John 15, 13 for us? Jesus' very simple words to his disciples. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
Those are John 15, 13 marks. Christ modeled that. He died a very unfair and very unjust death. But he did that because we are his friends. Those teachers put themselves on the line for those kids because they are their friends. Those people gathered around that car and lifted it up. In fact, there was an interview with four of them the next morning. There was the woman who kind of initiated this, two of the other helpers and the police officer. And the person doing the interview said to them, did you ever think of the fact that at any time that fire beneath the car or in the car on the motorbike could have exploded? It could have gone wild and taken your life. And they thought, they all said, no, that, that never occurred to us. What was important for us was to rescue that person. That's a John 15, 13 mark. And I believe that's, that's something that God would want to ingrain in us, that we would appreciate and value each other that deeply and that powerfully. But, friends, I want to say that that does not come naturally. I think in our heart of hearts, we would want to believe that we would do what, what they had done in that situation. But I really think it's a decision. It's a framework. It's a perspective that we have that we would value someone else that deeply. Here's how I know that that didn't come naturally. If you look at that video clip, the driver of that car never gets involved in rescuing that motorbike rider. You see him standing at a distance, away from the circle of people. In fact, at one point when the woman's running around to try and, and look to see if this guy is breathing, the driver of the car rests up on, on the trunk of his car like this. The contrast is absolutely astounding between the people who would risk their lives and somebody who decided, I'm not going to get involved. I don't believe this comes naturally. I believe Jesus' words to his disciples are, you need to be willing to do this. And Jesus refers to Peter. There's that great passage with Peter when Peter says, you know, Jesus is telling his disciples, look, the way this is going to end is going to be ugly. I'm going to die. And Peter says, Lord, that is not going to happen. I will give my life so that you will live. But Jesus knows what's going to happen down the line. And he says to Peter, look, Peter, that's just not going to happen. You're, in fact, you're going to deny me three times before you would even save me. As it turns out, that does happen. But somewhere in Peter's mind and somewhere in Peter's life, something changes. That he would be willing to risk him, his own self so that the, the good news of God's love, the, the, the good news of God's liberation, the good news of God's forgiveness would be spread. That Peter would eventually be killed for his own faith. And consciously in that moment, history tells us that Peter said to those who would crucify him, I am not worthy of being crucified like Jesus Christ. You need to crucify me upside down. Something happened in that man's life that changed. From a guy who said, I'll be willing to do this, and then didn't do it, to a guy who said, I'll be willing to do this, and then did it. In the most humble and profound way possible. So I think one of the things that comes out of that Oklahoma moment, out of that tornado moment for us, is that we need to, in our heart of hearts, allow God to speak to us about the value of another human being's life. I believe God needs to be able to speak to us and say, these are people of my creation. How far would you be willing to go to help someone else out. In this Memorial Day weekend, we do look at people who have given their lives literally for others. But there are other ways in which you could give your life. Those of you who have given up your life, your lifestyle, should I say, so that you can take care of your parents because they've moved them into, you've moved them into your own home with you, that's a sacrifice of life. Or the other way around. Maybe you've gone to live with your parents. Drastic change in lifestyle. 
Others of you have sacrificed your life in order to help others. Drastic lifestyle change. There are different ways in which we, we, we can give ourselves to others. And it does require sacrifice. And it is difficult. And we can't always predict the outcome. But I do believe that is what God asks each and every one of us to do. And so for those teachers who were willing to do that on Monday, I, I, I just, I am deeply grateful that though not only those people uh, are alive, but they are models to all of us. They are models to all of us. So what happened with FEMA? Well, Brian Williams, the TV guy, interviewed the governor of Oklahoma and in commenting on this FEMA situation said something to her that was very, very interesting. He said, your, your faith community has become your FEMA, right? And she said, yes. Those who have followed Christ have become FEMA. The organization that led us down so desperately, that gap has been filled by people who follow Jesus, who are willing to give of themselves to help their fellow human beings. That was an awesome story. It was teachers who gave of themselves. It was people of faith who said, I'm going to put my stuff down because I need to go help there. That's the kind of people I believe God wants us to be. How about we pray? Gracious God, would you help us to be those people? Would you help us, God, um, to maybe have a different perspective on our fellow human beings? Those people who gathered around that car to lift it off, that motorbike rider didn't know what kind of person he was. Those teachers didn't stop and look at who was worthy and who was unworthy to be saved. They just valued that person's life. I pray, God, you would instill that within us. Amen. Friends, we're going to um, say our closing thought together, and then the uh, praise team is going to play us out on our way. So let's say our closing thought together. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips those He calls. God, what are you calling me to do? Friends, go in peace. Mm -hmm.